Okay, Wendy, we're gonna get started. Just just let me know if you can see my full screen. Yes, I can see it. All right, perfect. All right, so uh, welcome everybody to um, this presentation of apps.com presents using QuickBooks apps to get ready for tax season. The apps that we're gonna review today are Tax Planner Pro, Tax1099.com, and Avalara Avatax. Today is January 18th, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. This presentation is written and presented by myself in collaboration with Intuit Accountant University, um, also known or previously known as IntuitAcademy.com and Apps.com. All right. So a little bit about, about myself. I work and live in Miami, Florida. I'm an advanced uh, QuickBooks certified pro advisor. I I teach actually uh, QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online in my own classroom in South Florida. Um, I'm a co-presenter of a QB Power Hour, which is another uh, webinar series uh, that we do uh, about uh, about QuickBooks related uh, applications as well. And uh, my main website is qbblog.com. Check it out. We write uh, information there probably two or three times a week, different articles about QuickBooks. Very glad to be here today. Let's talk about the learning objectives. So after, I lear after, after attending this course, you will be able to navigate and find apps, uh, the apps that you need in apps.com. You're going to be able to use the functionality provided by the specific applications that we're going to demonstrate um, because these uh, enhance ta the tax preparation process with QuickBooks Online. You're also going to be able to identify the type of clients and maybe the type of situations um, that that would um, that would warrant the use of these apps and the type of clients that would benefit from the use of these apps. And then I'll talk about, I basically end every apps.com webinar with uh, the consulting opportunity, which is sort of my recommendation on how you can integrate this specific apps into your practice if you are an accounting professional providing any sort of consulting services beyond the accounting uh, the core accounting services that most accounting professionals provide. To get your CPE, you must attend the webinar uh, for the entire period. This webinar would be at least 50 minutes long. Uh, we're going to give you a CPE uh, keyword in the middle of the webinar, and you must write that down. And towards the end of the webinar, you're going to be prompted for that keyword. You must answer that correctly. In order to answer that correctly, I mean, in order to get your CPE, you must answer that correctly. Uh, our system will automatically email you a CPE certificate via email within three weeks. Please give it three weeks um, for that certificate. And it would be the same exact email used uh, when you registered for the training. So we can't you know, replace it and use a different email instead. Right. Make sure that you write uh, um, and you add to your safe contact list accountant underscore training at Intuit.com uh, into your approver contact list, approver, uh, sender list, just in case your email software sends it to spam for some reason. Uh, please keep a copy of your records. Intuit doesn't have a CPE, historical CPE retrieval process. So once you get the certificate, save it for your records um, because it would, it's very difficult to retrieve them later on. Now, if you have a copy of the presentation, if you go to that link, that YouTube link, uh, that's if, if this is your first time dabbling and working with uh, apps for QuickBooks Online, I recommend you watch that video. Uh, that video kind of talks about the underlying concepts of adding apps to QuickBooks and how the ecosystem works. We're going to do a quick demonstration, I mean, a quick um, introduction of, of, of what's an app and what's the uh, Intuit ecosystem. But if you want a whole presentation of that, check out that video. Anyway, uh, let's start with what is an app. In context, an app is an application designed to perform uh, a function that QuickBooks is not designed to do. In some cases, the apps do very similar things that QuickBooks does, but um, it'll tend to specialize into, um, into transactions that are not core accounting functions. Um, however, the most common denominator or the, the common denominator of the transactions that you see in apps and QuickBooks are typically the customer's names, the vendor names, invoice amounts, employee names, that sort of thing. 
Some of these apps are platforms by themselves. That means that they can even connect with other systems. And connecting with QuickBooks is actually optional. Um, you're going to see uh, with the example of tax1099.com, uh, tax1099.com doesn't have to be connected to QuickBooks. You can import data in multiple ways. That's what it means by their platforms in itself, that they're not completely dependent on QuickBooks Online. Now, why use third-party apps? Um, because Intuit is not going to focus on solving every problem uh, for every company and for every uh business and for every uh, sol- uh, issue out there. Uh, Intuit is going to focus, keep continue to focus to grow uh, their QuickBooks Online system to be a reliable and scalable open platform that is in essence the operating system of the small business that only performs core accounting functions, uh, thus allowing the third-party developers to concentrate in fulfilling those specific micro needs, which is the example of some of the apps here, you know, Intuit has actually has a sales tax module, um, but Avatax, Avalara Avatax goes into so much more in depth, which we'll explain. And then Intuit also has financial reports, which you could, in essence, do a little bit tax planning from, but Tax Planner Pro, one of the apps we'll, we'll, we'll mention here, um, the, the, it goes a lot more in depth when it comes to tax planning. Same thing with uh, doing uh, 1099s. QuickBooks Online can do 1099 through a, an e-file service that it has built in. But again, it doesn't go as much in depth as the third-party app. So it's extremely important to just kind of keep that in mind that these third-party app developers are typically going to go much deeper into each function. Now, Reader's Digest version of the three featured apps Tax Planner Pro, what Tax Planner Pro does, and we're going to do a full demo of that, is going to take the financial information from QuickBooks Online, all the income, all the expenses, and and, and that net income amount is going to plug it into, um, into, into the software, into the app, and it's going to calculate uh, your taxes that you're going to pay from that. But however, this is not... Uh, in retrospect, this is not for you to pay taxes. This is not a tax preparation software. This is a tax planning software. So this is for for the app to ongoingly, in real time, be measuring and calculating your potential tax liability for the year. Okay, so that's Tax Planner Pro in a nutshell. Tax 1099, it's a 1099 preparation uh, app. Um, it can do additional forms other than 1099. However, obviously, its core is the 1099 miscellaneous uh, forms, which are the ones that are giving to uh, contractors. And we're going to go into in depth about what it can do and what it can do differently than um, the QuickBooks Online built-in 1099 uh, e-file service. And then Avalara Avatax, which is an in-depth sales tax management app that can take all the sales from QuickBooks and based on the location that you're selling it to, uh, the ship to location and the states that you have Nexus on, 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 we'll spend some time talking about Nexus, what what does Nexus mean? Um, Depending on which state you have Nexus, it will calculate the sales tax or not if you're not eligible um, to charge sales tax on that particular location. So those are the three apps in a nutshell. We're gonna jump in and talk about Tax Planner Pro first. So first of all, I'm going to go through a couple of slides and kind of explain what uh, the software is through slides, and then we'll jump in and do a, a quick demonstration and answer any questions uh, from the crowd that, that there may be. I strongly suggest that um, the people that are watching this webinar live, go ahead and ask any questions you want. We're going to answer as much of them as possible. Even though this session is being recorded, um, you all are watching a live. So I think that watching a live gives you that added advantage where you can just ask questions. So anyway, um, the first page that you see when you log into Tax Planner Pro is the summary page. Now, let me just uh, keep something in mind. I'm going to show two sets of screens. I'm going to show the client screen. This is what uh, the QuickBooks user will see. And then I'm going to show you the accountant portal which is an optional uh, system that accountants can set up if they're going to manage multiple clients with Tax Planner Pro. And then we'll explain the price differences and all that stuff. Anyway, um, so this is the the client portal or the the company uh, portal. And basically what you see is a summary of the sales, the expenses, uh, the ownership interests. Basically, this is all projected. So whatever you've sold, 
uh, for the week, for the month, for the quarter, and the expenses that you had for the, again, for the week, for the month, and the quarter. Um, Tax Planner Pro is going to annu- annualize um, the, the taxable income all the way at the end, and it's going to calculate your tax due, as you see in the top left there, it says that there's $100,000 of tax due. It's going to annualize that tax due. And then as you make estimated payments, you can go in the software and actually tell it that you are making estimated payments. And then that tax due um, gets um, gets recalculated based on that. Now, some of the, let me go to the next slide here. Some of the real interesting things that you can do is, um, as you see in the first column, um, those are my sales and my expenses as they are shown in QuickBooks. That's the first column that you see there in that in that business projection. Um, and that's up to, for example, I ran that for 15 days of the first two weeks of the year. The second column, you see the projected amount. So it says, look, based on what you sold the last 15 days, if the rest of the, of the year has the same exact pattern of sales and expenses, this would be the projected annualized amount. And that's what that second uh, column is. And that's the net income of 361000 which is how it calculates uh, your taxes. But then you, all, you always have the option to override it. So let's say that you the first six months are, are particularly busy and then it becomes pretty slow afterwards. And it's just not a, a correct calculation to... to um, to project that the first six months are going to be just like the second six months. So you can actually just manually override whatever the budgeted amount for the year is in the last column. And then Tax Planner Pro is going to override and show me my estimated tax based on the overridden amount, not so much the projected amount. Now, when you go to the planner section, and again, this sometimes this is a uh, uh, useful enough for the client to kind of just see all the options of uh, of, of uh, different strategies to reduce their taxes. And sometimes these are things that they can do with their tax preparer in combination. And, um, and basically the software uh, Tax Planner Pro will uh, let you know if there are any opportunities for um, adding some depreciation or maybe reducing uh, taxes with a SEP IRA or using the 14-day home rental uh, opportunity to review some, uh, I mean, to to uh, to have some potential deductions. So basically, it has a series of um, of ongoing and proactive uh, tax advices um, that 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 show up that you can actually um, click on any of those and, and and read more about it. And some of them will have videos explaining to you what what exactly those deductions do. And then you can hit the thumbs up and thumbs down if you have reviewed it, if you understand it, if you are going to implement the strategy or just put thumbs down you know, because it doesn't apply to you or because you're not going to do it. So it's, all, it's kind of neat. It has a, a, a built-in sort of a tax planning, proactive tax planning uh, suggestion tool per se. Then it also has a, a pretty neat uh, tax simulator. And what you're seeing here is um, the combination of the business income and the personal income. For example, if you have an S corporation or a partnership where you have a business and an owner and you may have to combine multiple components of, you know, we have the net income from the business, but we also have maybe um, other sources of income from one of the owners and uh, and that owner wants to enter that uh, uh, outside source of income and also their own uh, deductions and their own estimated payments that way you, you you get as accurate as possible when uh, when calculating that that projected tax that's kind of a the interesting um, uh, extra options you have in there now um, when you sync tax planner pro you have the option to have it uh, sync in a weekly basis in a monthly basis or in a quarterly basis and this is actually really important because some um, some some end users need some time to sort of digest this information, and if um and if Tax Planner Pro is updating that tax uh, amount every week, uh, that person may just go may just get confused. So you have the option to instead of doing it every um, every every week, where you know at the end of Friday on the next Saturday it syncs uh, from QuickBooks Online to update the information. You can push it to monthly. And, which is done on the 20th of the month. So it's kind of giving you 20 days to do all your reconciliations and all your adjustments. 
et cetera, et cetera. Now, what you're seeing here is the accountant portal. The accountant portal is an option you have with Tax Planner Pro, which is setting up an account as an accountant, which allows you to manage multiple clients from the same, uh, from one screen. You can actually add manual data to non-QuickBooks Online clients. So if you have a QuickBooks Online client, I mean, if you have a QuickBooks Online client, the data will sync automatically. If it's not a QuickBooks Online client, you can just plug in that um, that net income amount, and then the system will um, uh, be having the dynamic tax planning number as you change it in a weekly or monthly or quarterly basis manually for those non-QuickBooks Online clients. And also you have the option to ghost in, which basically means that you click in and you can see what your client sees uh, when they log in as, um, as a user on their side. So the other interesting uh, perk or interesting um, uh, add-on that you get when you log in as, a, as an accountant through the accountant portal is access to the tax, planary, tax planner mastery courses uh, made by Christopher Reagan, which is the creator of this app, um, and access to the registered tax planner credential. So there's a certificate program made by Tax Planner Pro called the Registered Tax Planner, which um, basically uh, takes you to the, the learning process of you know what are the the tax planning sort of tax planning 101 uh, techniques and some of the advanced tax planning techniques and you know Tax Planner Pro will give you that credential that you are a proactive tax planner, which will be really great for an accounting professional um, looking to get that extra you know sort of uh, credential. So, um, so the clients see, oh, you're you're a tax planning expert. Uh, hopefully, you can help me uh, make sure that I don't get any, any tax payment surprises at the end of the year. So, obviously, the combination of knowing all the tax laws and all the tax planning tools and using Tax Planner Pro year-round connected to your QuickBooks as an accounting professional can give you uh, the ability to help your client with tax planning all year long. Now, real quick before I jump into the demo. Um, there's a there's there's a free 100% free forever account um, for business only tax projections um, that's called a light account. So you can actually connect any of your clients' uh, corporate accounts with QuickBooks Online to Tax Planner Pro for free. Doesn't cost anything. However, it will only do business tax projections. So if you're if we're talking about a C corp. Um, perfect because C-Corps pay taxes and that will be there. But if you need anything combining the, the person's, the, the owner's tax return and the and the business, then you have to move to the basic, which is $2 a month. And these are all um, monthly, but they're annual, um, sort of uh, based on annual terms. And then the professional version also gives you access to the, um, the tax plan simulator and the tax strategy module that I spoke to. I spoke about a couple minutes ago. Now, if you are an accountant managing multiple clients through Tax Planner Pro, you can get the mini account, which is $39 a month. It gives you access to the Tax Planner course that we spoke about in, in up to 10 clients. Now, if you want to become a registered tax planner and go through the exam, get a designation, have access to their, their support, they have a special tax planner support hotline, and you can add up to 150 clients um, for that flat $99 a month, then recommend that you look into the RTP designee um, account level uh, for a Tax Planner Pro. Okay, so let me jump in and do a demo of it. And again, we'll welcome any questions. I don't, I don't, I don't think I see any questions on the, on the, on the, in here and go to webinar yet, but you know, go ahead and ask any questions that that um, that you want. Okay, so I have a uh, QuickBooks Online showing now, and then I'm gonna click here on apps real quick, and um, and then here under uh, apps, I'm gonna see all the apps that are currently connected to my QuickBooks Online account. Now I, I connected um, the QuickBooks, uh, I connected these uh, these apps. Before I started the webinar, that way um, they're all showing up in there. And um, Pastor, excuse me. Yes. We can't see your screen. Okay. How about now? There, better. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Wendy. Uh, it got on. It got on. Um, on shared for some reason. Okay. Uh, all right. So let me just. Uh, uh, so I'll just skip that. Let me go straight to Tax Planner Pro. This is what the um, the application looks like. 
And basically, every time I, I and then I'm going to show you kind of where these numbers come from. So when I when I scroll down here and you see my uh, business summary, and it has here my taxable income, and then has here my tax due. So what you can see here is a combination between um, the income components uh, that are being affected from from the transactions inside QuickBooks Online. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Edit for Business Summary to show you where that that's coming from. And as I and there you go. Look in QuickBooks Online, I have a $6,700 invoice, and I'm just going to show you where that comes from. So I'm going to log into my QuickBooks Online account here. Just give it a second for it to load. Yeah, it's loading a little slow for some reason. I was having some internet connection issues earlier. But if I I can still show Tax Planner Pro, no problem. I just wanted to kind of show you where the information came from in terms of QuickBooks Online. Anyway, so I had I, I put one one invoice there for sixty seven thousand, and I had two expenses to give me a net income of 13,000. Now, I will tell it here what percentage of the business does um, the particular owner that I'm doing the tax planning uh, uh, a session for or the tax planning work for, I can put there what percentage of the business they own. If that happens to be 75%, you know, wh wh whatever. That will actually take now that net income, it would annualize it. Right? So we'll take the 13,000, it would annualize it, multiply it times, so in this case it's 15 days. So we'll multiply it times, you know, how many, how many ever days in the year. And then at the end, it will send that percentage, whatever that percentage happens to be, let's say it's 50, it will send that percentage to your, quote unquote, your personal tax return. And then let me just go back and show you that part out. So I'm going to show you the personal piece. This is really the, the, the neat part about it is that I can put a whole bunch of components from my um, uh, from my personal tax return. So I'm going to go ahead and click on edit on their personal summary. And this is where I get to put all the information about the owner. I can put whether they're single, whether um, he's married, whether he's got, you know, whatever, 10 dependents, whatever it happens to be, right? Um, you know, whatever income uh, components, this is all the personal side income components from bank interest, income components from mortgage interest. Again, this is all uh, actually, I mean, uh, deductions from mortgage interest, deductions from property taxes. Um, so we get to put all the components here of the personal, the owner, uh, and that would add up to the S corp income. And and if you, ha if you have other corporations that are not running through here, they can add that, in, they can add that additional uh, wages in there. And basically you hit calculate and it will calculate um, the taxable income based on based on those numbers. So this automatically, again, we typically what we do is we take the tax return from the previous year, and we estimate that that on the personal side, the, the personal stuff would be exactly like the next, you know, like the previous year. You, if you're not the tax preparer yourself, uh, let's say you're a bookkeeper, an accounting professional that is going to work with the client but not do their taxes, you can sit down with their tax um, professional and with the client and figure out, you know, what they project their income to be on the personal side, add all those components in there, and then allow you to have that ongoing tax projection that gives that business owner an idea of how much taxes they're going to basically pay at the end of the year so they can make their estimated pay payments and again avoid any surprises towards the end of the year that's kind of what the the purpose of the software in a nutshell and then here under tax simulator we can we can also make uh, changes to those numbers so under planning that's where we put the permanent numbers that we think they're going to be under simulator this is where we're going to uh, change some of those income and expense components uh, that that we that we we think we may have or we may not have. And then here you can say, look, you know, what if I make a $12,000 payment um, in my estimated taxes on the first quarter? You know, what if I do that? And if I put that number there, up here you're going to have a, a live recalculation of my tax projection. You know, what if my second quarter I pay 5800 And then what if in my fourth quarter I pay, let's say, 25000 then here up here it tells you exactly how much your tax projection is. So you can you can have a dynamic uh, 
planning session at any point of the year uh, based on you know different income and expense components on the personal side and also on the on the business side all right so that's tax planner pro in a nutshell let me go ahead and move to the next app looks like there are no questions so all right so i can move to the next app here as i go and there are no questions right wendy correct okay so write down the cp keyword the cp keyword is hawaii So the CP keyword is Hawaii, write that down. Again, we're gonna ask you a question at the end of the webinar. So you enter the correct answer and only the people that, that uh, enter the correct answer will get their CP certificate. So again, write down Hawaii. So I have to put this, leave this up for another 20 seconds or so. Okay, so CP keyword, Hawaii, going once, going twice. Okay, done. Okay, so we're gonna move to the next app now. Oh, there is a question, okay. So does Tax Planner Pro allow for a user using uh, Quicken? Okay, so that's a good question. So um, QuickBooks Online is the only one that syncs directly. Um, from um, from uh, QuickBooks to Tax Planner Pro. However, as I mentioned earlier, you have the ability to just manually insert the numbers. So if you have somebody using Quicken, uh, no, you cannot just have it synced, but you can take the net income from Quicken and just plug it in there and, and just make sure that every month or every quarter or so, just, uh, just change that net income number so the system can calculate that, that tax amount. All right, so that's the answer to that question. Okay, so let's talk about tax1099.com now. So tax1099.com is what the dashboard looks like. And again, I'm gonna go through a couple of slides and then I'll do the demo uh, live. So this is what the, the dashboard looks like. Um, it's, it's one place where you can actually manage multiple clients and you can do uh, their 1099s. There's a, there's a couple of really neat features that you don't get with any, with uh, the Intuit's, uh, built-in e-file service. So one of them is being able to do a W-2, I mean a W-9 request. That's a really, really nice thing. So with a W-9 request, we can actually um, put uh, our vendor's email and then uh, 1099.com will request a W-9 and then your independent contractor or your vendor can actually input all that information. Once that W-9 comes back, all, all that information is digitally entered in there and then you can just uh, create the 1099 from there. That's actually a really nice thing. The other really uh, interesting thing that it can do that the Intuit um, 1099 e-file service cannot do, it's email your contractors the, the 1099s. It can also, for an extra fee, they will print it and mail the 1099 for your contractors as well. And it can do a TIN, TIN matching service, tax ID, tax identification number matching service, which means you know double checking that their name and their social security actually match. Uh, because sometimes if you ever done 1099s before, if you send it to the wrong person, then you get letters from the IRS saying that these things don't match, that you have to go back and redo. And it just basically allows you to avoid um, some issues if you're, you know, you, you don't have the right social security numbers, plus making sure that the people um, that are, are giving you real social security numbers as well, right? Okay, so one of the um, underlying most important things to kind of keep track of is that in QuickBooks Online, you have to make sure that all the vendors are being marked as track payments as 1099. You must have that check mark there. Um, in order for tax 1099 to recognize that the payments for that particular vendor are the ones that are going to be uh, included in a 1099. You have to make sure that you mark it. If you don't mark um, the vendors as a 1099 vendor, that information uh, doesn't um, doesn't flow through. Okay. Now somebody else is asking right now: Do you need do you need to have QBO Plus in order to work in tax1099.com? Hmm, that's a really good question. I think um, one of the staff members from tax1099 is here. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm asking him here and he's gonna write it to the chat. I am not 100% sure 
if um, I'm not 100% sure if you can have, um, uh, you have to have plus. Actually, yeah, he's answering. It needs to be the highest level of QBO, which which it's uh, plus. So to answer that question, yes, you have to have plus in order to work with this. And that's because that little checkbox that says track payments at 1099 is not enabled in any other version but plus. So Nassim, that's the answer um, to your question. Yes, you have to have plus in order to use this. However, um, that being said, if you don't have plus, if you have essentials, you could always just export a list of um, um, vendors. You can pull a special report where you can export a list of vendors in a spreadsheet and then you can just add their address information manually and then upload it um, as Excel. That could be one of the options, but it won't sync per se um, if you don't have the plus version. Okay, so this is what the screen looks like when you um, actually are going to create the forms. Here you get to see all the types of all the type of forms that you can use with uh, Track 1099. Like I, I personally do a lot of my 1099s through the Intuit e-filing service, but uh, for example, Intuit e-filing service cannot do 1099 INTs, which is for interest. Anyone that um, that you paid interest, any individual that lend the, the company money and you pay them interest, um, I, I use this software for all the time. And then uh, for dividends, so if you have any C corporations and they're paying the owners, they're, they're getting dividend distributions, then the only way um, I can do this is with this software with uh, tax1099.com where I can create my 1099 DIVs for um, some of the um, owners. Now, um, so the Obamacare forms, the 1095B and the 1095C, uh, those, again, Intuit doesn't have any built-in way of doing that, and 1099.com uh, is perfect for um, those uh, um, reporting forms for Obamacare to, um, to re report the amount of uh, taxes paid. Now, if you don't have a payroll service with Intuit through QuickBooks Online, uh, but you do have some data about payroll. Maybe maybe they 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 run payroll manually through Excel, or they they run pay, payroll manually by doing net checks in in QuickBooks. You can also use 1099.com to produce W2s and to file uh, 940 and 941 forms. Uh, now you have to plug in some of those numbers. It, it won't doesn't really sync because um, because uh, W2 and, and 940 that stuff. It, it can't sync from QuickBooks Online. You have to enter those numbers in there. But everything else, like a 1099 miscellaneous, um, that will sync automatically from uh, QuickBooks uh, Online. All right, so let's talk about some of the um, just conceptual things here, if, if anyone here is new to 1099s. So one of the 1099 has about uh, 14 or 16 boxes in which you can report um, uh, the different types of income or withholding. The most common ones to kind of just think about when you prepare a 1099 form is going to be box one, which is uh, rents paid. So if you are a business and you pay an individual, you pay a person, an individual person, you pay them rent. So because the person is the one that owns that property, you must give them a 1099 at the end of the year and you must put them under box one. If, uh, if anybody uh, you're paying royalties to because uh, you're using a, a trademark or copyrighted uh, a product that they have and they give you the access to using it, or maybe you're a franchise, again, paying an individual uh, those royalties, then you have to create that 1099 as well and you put that under box two. And then box three, that's for uh, non-compensation but taxable payments. Um, so things like prices, awards, not cash bonuses, but something that wouldn't be a cash bonus, that would go under box three. And then box seven, that is the most common one. That is actually where most people uh, land all those payments when they do prepare a 1099, which is putting it under box seven, which is where you report all your independent contractors, all the third parties that are working for you, but they're not really employees. So that goes under box seven. So I wanted to kind of talk about those uh, real quick. When I do the demo, we're gonna talk about the boxes. So I wanna make sure that, that we have clarity around what those boxes mean. Now, in text99.com, you can import from several sources. Okay, as you see on the right side, that's the, uh, the import button, allows you to import a, a spreadsheet. If you're using bill.com, and let's say you're not using QuickBooks, if you're using bill.com and you have all your vendor payments in there, it can import from there. If you have QuickBooks Desktop or QuickBooks Online, it can import from there. 
if you're using other accounting software, the other five that are listed there that are not QuickBooks, you can also import from there. Now, if you don't have QuickBooks at all, if you have a client that has no QuickBooks at all, um, you can still use Quick uh, Tax 1099 and you can either import a spreadsheet or you can manually just uh, put the information there for every contractor and, and submit it. So this is still a standard, 100% standalone app and it's a platform in itself. So you're not really required to sync it with QuickBooks Online. Of course, I mean, if you have the data in QuickBooks Online, why not, you know, why, why enter the stuff by hand? So after you import from QuickBooks Online, uh, the list of all the vendors or the contractors are going to come in uh, into Tax 1099. So every payment that you made to them will come in here. And then we get to choose what box we're going to report it to. So we can actually individually choose. Um, each employee can go into it. I mean, each contractor, I apologize. Um, you know, their income could be reported in a different box as possible. But if you want to just select all of them and put everything in box seven, which is the most common thing, you're allowed to do that in a single in a single click. OK, and this this one uh, shows basically after you import that you can override the amounts if you need to for whatever reason, if they happen to be a different number, if there's an error in QuickBooks Online and you want to override it, you're welcome to override it. And you're also welcome to choose what box you're going to use to report. OK, and uh, one of the real nice things that it has is um, uh, error correction um, or, or error checking. So if uh, the tax ID doesn't prepare to be the uh, complete or doesn't prepare to be the right format or the phone number is missing or an address is missing or something like that, it won't let you go through. It forces you to put the correct information in order for you to be able to, to um, do the follow through and file the text the 1099s. Okay. Then when you're when you're done importing all the data and accepting, um, uh, make sure make sure all the data is correct and you're accepting the 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 amounts and the box that it's going to go into. This is where you have the multiple options. This is where you can choose, you know, when you want this uh, e-file to be uh, pushed or be scheduled. Uh, you get to choose whether it's going to be emailed uh, to the vendor uh, or it's actually going to print one and mail it to them. Whether you're gonna have this optional TIN matching service, which I believe is an extra dollar. I think it's one dollar per, per vendor. Actually, uh, th this slide shows it. So for example, on this particular example, I was creating two 1099s. So the fee was $2.90 per, uh, per 1099, plus $1.25 to actually print it, mail it, and send it to the vendor, which again, that's optional. You don't have to do that. And the tin matching, which also is optional, was a, a dollar. Okay, So that gives you kind of an idea of, of, of the potential cost you can have. And I believe that this cost go down with volume. So when you actually you know, have maybe 100 1099s, you know, the, the cost uh, goes down over time. Okay, Now, this is, the, this is what the screen looks like. This is the feature to request a double your nine. So basically, you, you create your vendor, you enter whatever information that you have. If, you're, if, you, if you have some of it, if you have none of it, I mean, you at least have to have their name and their email, right? And this is where you choose whether their business individual, and you hit that little checkbox up there that says W9 request. Uh, that's what you need to uh, tell Tax 1099 that this is going to be a requested W9. Uh, when that W9 comes back, uh, tax 1099 will let you know, and then you can um, go ahead and process of 1099s. And there's a, there's a built-in template you can download, which is a great tool. It's an Excel file you can give to your clients. Um, for clients that, that are looking to sort of lower their tax 1099 preparation fees, you can say, look, um, since you don't have QuickBooks, since your books are a mess or whatever, I'm going to give you a spreadsheet. You give me the information about about every vendor, you fill out this entire spreadsheet, put their name, their address, their social security, all that stuff in there, the total amounts. And as long as you give me this exact spreadsheet uh, filled out completely, you can import this and prepare the 1099 in minutes. So it could be a way of uh, you know, kind of helping your client out if they don't want to pay for the entire service of actually transcribing all the data. So you can always use a, a, spread, a spreadsheet like this. So that's what I think it's pretty neat about it. Okay, let me switch over to switch over to the live demo. 
and Wendy, just to make sure that we don't run into the same issue as before, can you just double check that um, you can see my uh, my my browser? Yes, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Okay, let me reload it here just in case to make sure that I log in into uh, an account here. All right. Okay, so basically, once I connect my um, my uh, I don't know why it says disconnected. Let me just uh, double check here. Maybe I should log out and log back in. I'm gonna log out and log back in just in case. Okay, so let me log in and then show you kind of how this works. Okay, and meanwhile, let me, while this loads, let me just, uh, Put my password here. I can um, hmm. okay. So while that loads, let me just show something real quick. So when I'm in the vendor center, when I click on vendors here on the left navigation bar, and um, in the vendor center, this is where I'm going to see all my all my active vendors. In my vendor center, I have to click on the vendor and click on edit in order to see, let me refresh, I don't know what my QBO is acting up today. Um, I may have to log in again, but I wanted to show you how to how to hit that little checkbox that says um, that says the vendor is a 1099. So I wanna make sure I show you that before I, before I go to the next uh, demo here. Let me open up the, this one is called small, Let's see. I can show you in any, any of these here. Let me just go. Okay, then I'm gonna go hit back here at tax 1099. So here you see where it says status connected. That means that I've connected my QBO account with tax 1099. I get to select the tax year in which I'm preparing 1099s for, I can do all the way uh, three years back. So I can do current year and two years below. And then I click on uh, proceed and then I'll click here and start new import. And basically this is going to take all the data from uh, from uh, QuickBooks Online and, and bring all my vendor information in here. And again, let me just uh, go back and show you, let me go to the vendor center. Uh, here and then I'll pick any of these vendors. And in order for this uh, vendor to show up as a tax 1099, I have to click on that edit button and come down here and click on track payments as 1099. So it's extremely important and have their tax ID and have their full address. This is the, the place where um, tax 1099 grabs all the data from the vendors from. Um, so if you have vendors that are not eligible for 1099, then obviously don't mark them because then those are going to be imported as well, and then it'll just not make a lot of sense. Okay, so there, so there we go. So for example, I have these three vendors. Okay, I have Jose, Alvarez, Roman, Stevenson. These two guys, um, they are box seven because these are uh, non-employee compensation. But uh, in the example of individual lender, um, this one would be not a 1099 miscellaneous, but this this one would be used to do a 1099 INT, for example. So for this one, I wouldn't I wouldn't file him. I wouldn't file a 1099 miscellaneous for him. I would file a 1099 INT, which is a different form type. So this is an interesting piece that allows you to pick and choose which vendors were actually going to do the 1099s for. So let's say we're going to do it just for these two guys, and then I'll hit next. Okay, and then this is the error correction I was telling you, right? Like it can move forward if something is missing, right? So in this case, it was missing uh, some information from the company. So it's missing the tax ID from the company. So I have to make sure that I put that information in there. And then it's missing the phone number from the company as well. So I'll put that information in there, hit update. Okay, then I'll do another um, sort of uh, error check. As long as there's no red dots, um, then that means I'm I'm pretty much uh, good to go for um, for uh, for error correction. And then I hit next, and then it takes me to the process uh, where it lets me choose, you know, what's what's going to be my next step. You know, I pay the fee, and then I can e-file my uh, my 1099. So it's actually pretty pretty straightforward. Um, in a nutshell, I think that the most 
important things to, to remember that Text99 does that the Intuit e-filing service uh, doesn't do is that it can request the W9s, it can paper print the 1099s and send them to the contractors, um, and it can also email them to the contractors, which um, the Intuit e-filing service cannot do. All right, let me see if there's any questions on this. Um, how can you know which vendors need to receive a 1099? That's one of the questions. So um, Felicia, you know, so I'm a CPA, so I have to obviously make the disclaimer, you know, consult your tax profession or blah, blah, blah. But in a nutshell, any individual vendor, any person that you pay, first name, last name, that you pay more than $600 a month throughout the year, sorry, more than $600 for the year, so more than $600 uh, throughout the entire year, you must give them a 1099. That's it. You know, as long as it's a compensation for services, not a, a reimbursement or something like that. So as long as it's compensation for services. Okay. Um, now, if there is an LLC that is a, um, a single member, so a single member LLC, so it's a company, but that company files as, um, as a personal return, basically, then you also must give them a 1099. So it's any individual or any single member LLC. Like corporations, you normally don't have to give text 1099s to. Okay, so let's jump to Avalara Avatax. That's the next app that we're gonna demonstrate here. And in a nutshell, this is a, a, a software that, can, that allows you to manage your sales taxes. Um, it, can, it can decide what tax rate to charge based on who the client is, right? Based on where you're delivering the product to and where you have jurisdiction or where you have nexus. So I'll talk about nexus real quick. Nexus is a technical term, which means sufficient connect connection a business has with a tax jurisdiction. So we have 50 states, okay? And you may have a company that's only established in Florida, for example. But let's say I have a sales, I have a full-time salesperson in New York. Based on the Nexus rules of New York, it's highly likely that I have Nexus in New York, which means everything that I sell in Florida, I pay sales tax in Florida. Everything I sell in New York, I will pay sales tax in New York. Everything I sell everywhere else, I don't have to charge or pay sales tax. That's basically what it means in a nutshell. Now. Every state, again, every state has different nexus rules, but in a nutshell, as long as you have any substantial physical presence, which means um, you have obviously a corporate office, a storefront, that's very obvious that you have nexus, right? Because you have a physical office or a physical um, space that gives you nexus. In most states, that just gives you nexus. Um, having remote employees that are payroll in a different state also gives you nexus. Not every state, but in most states, it does. Um, owning or renting any space uh, where you're just, just having inventory, that gives you ne Nexus as well. Um, having uh, sales representatives or marketing people um, that are scheduled and visiting uh, people in a different state, that may also give you Nexus. And having, um, a, having a, a, a company vehicle or having doing deliveries with your own uh, vehicles that you own and not, not outsource delivery, but with your own company vehicles in a different state may also give you Nexus. So, so these are the uh, challenges of, 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 of dealing with um, sales taxes. Number one is we have to determine, do I have Nexus, right? And sometimes you, you, you may need, um, you may need uh, a tax professional in every state to figure out what the rules are for every state. Um, which products are taxable and which is are not? That's another uh, major challenge of, of dealing with sales tax. You know, what slight modifications to a non-taxable sale makes it taxable? Like, for example, in Florida, if I sell a service, uh, sorry, if I sell a, a product, um, it's taxable. But if I, but the delivery um, is not. However, the delivery must be optional because if the delivery is implied, then delivery is taxable as well. It's one of the very interesting things in this whole thing. Um, so, so if so, if you sell something where delivery is optional, the client come, comes, picks it up, or they pay for a separate company to get it delivered, 
then you charge sales tax on the county that you sold it to. But if you do the, the, the delivery, if the delivery is part of the sale, then then you um, charge the sales tax based on the county that you delivered to. And sometimes sales tax varies from county from to county. So that's the other challenges. You got you got states that vary per county. You have slight modifications to a sale that may change, um, you know, the, the, the sales tax taxability. If you're dealing with international business, that's even, you know, even more challenging. And, you know, just remitting uh, the tax and paying it in multiple jurisdictions, it's a, it's a lot of work. Plus dealing with use tax, which is when you buy something from a different state that the other state doesn't charge you the sales tax, but because you're using it in your state, you have to pay the sales tax. So again, all these challenges of, of, of sales tax is what Avalara does. Avalara that's all they do. They manage sales tax. So the Avatax app, which is what we're talking about specifically here, it's um, it's an app that is built into QuickBooks Online. It does not use QuickBooks Online's regular sales tax uh, tools. So there's no need to turn on sales tax inside QuickBooks Online. Um, it's one of the very few apps um, that actually has buttons inside QuickBooks Online that 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 activate avatax so for example once you turn on avatax um, and you're inside quickbooks online every time you create a sale there's a button in the bottom that says estimate tax and the system will go to avatax and it will check the address of the vendor and based on the address of the vendor and based on whether or not you have nexus right which is is part of the setup process to, to tell it what state you have nexus in the system will either calculate sales tax of zero or whatever the sales tax that is supposed to be. So that's pretty cool. Um, so if you don't have any um, any nexus in that state, then it will just calculate a tax of zero. Okay. It also does uh, address validation. Again, this is all address uh, driven. So Avatax, Avalara needs to know that the address is correct in order to figure out that it is the right county to charge sales tax and that sort of thing. Um, let me see. Uh, Uh, sorry about that. somebody saying that the slides they were seeing the wrong slide there. So let me just go back and and do the slides here. So these slides are are were included on the email. Um, this has the explanation of Nexus that I spoke about. Um, so that's all part of the slides, and it looks like this, these slides weren't showing. They're showing now, right, Wendy? The right slides are showing are showing now. Yes, it looks like it. Thank you. Okay. All right. So that so those are all the everything that we spoke about uh, Nexus. That's all part of the slides. And this is the screenshot that I was uh, mentioning that you don't need to turn on uh, the regular sales tax in QuickBooks Online. This is what the invoice looks like when you're doing an invoice, whatever it is that you're selling, and the estimate uh, tax button. And um, this is what it looks like after it estimates the sales tax. Avatax actually adds that sales tax line in there. You don't have to add it. You don't have to calculate it. And um, and this is uh, what it looks like when the address is correct or incorrect in the vendor center. Sorry, in the customer center, it will let you know whether the address has been validated or not. So that's what that looks like. Okay, those are the only slides that we missed. So this is what Avatax looks like um, when you when you first are setting it up. You're gonna tell it um, which state you have Nexus in. Again, what jurisdiction you have to uh, uh, collect sales tax and remit sales tax, and you're gonna have you know a tax ID on every on every state. And also, you 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 let it know when the Nexus began or when you actually have to uh, start um, collecting and remitting sales tax. So you put that date range in there, and QuickBooks will know together with Avatax based on the date of the invoice, whether or not it should calculate uh, sales tax. Now, this is what the transaction report looks like um, after I created a bunch of uh, invoices in QuickBooks and, um, and Avatax calculates, some are taxable, some are not. So I can actually see invoice by invoice, everything that's being registered in Avatax as a, as a taxable and a non-taxable sale. And you can actually go in it individually in Avatax if you need to, and modify the tax code, modify the amount. If for whatever reason you don't want to touch it in QuickBooks Online, but you have to touch it in Avatax, you actually have the ability uh, to do so as well in there. Um, and then I strongly recommend that you look into Avalara University, which has tons of training about uh, sales tax basics and sales taxes in different states, and Nexus, which is a big 
you know, big elephant in the room here. You know, what's Nexus and when Nexus is included. So that's all part of the, the Avalara service. Strongly recommend that you look into that. Let me do a quick demo here. If I can, um, this is what Avalara, this is what the Avalara tax um, admin module looks like. I just kind of want to show you what that looks like. So let me switch on to the live demo here and I'll refresh. Hector, we can't see your screen. Okay, I think it takes like a minute for it to refresh. Can you see it now? Yes, thank you. Okay, so um, here, right here on the on the on the front page, I see a graph, um, which basically lets me know what's going on with my taxes in real time. So that's kind of one of the most useful things is this uh, tax summary shows me all my taxable sales, my non-taxable sales, and my tax amount. Okay, um, if I click on, for example, organization, this is where I was showing you one of the slides here. If I click here where it says Nexus jurisdictions, this is where I get to choose. I tell it, I, I'm gonna click here, select jurisdictions. This is where I tell it, you know, where in the United States I have Nexus and um, in, I, I would have a tax ID on every single state and the date range on which state um, I have Nexus in. So you can get, choose which state you have Nexus in. And again, you may need to consult a tax professional or Avalara has a service. Um, I don't think it's free. I, I'm gonna assume for a minute that it's not free, but it, it, it does have a, um, a service that will let you know based on your situations, they will do the research for you and um, and, and let you know whether or not a, uh, a, you do have Nexus on the state based on the circumstances. And the most important thing is here, when I click here on tax returns, is that um, it would actually file the returns for you. Um, so you can actually, it would actually prepare the returns for you. So based on, you know, which states you have jurisdiction on and based on the on the sales that you've had on each state, um, it would actually allow you to quickly create, I mean, I just I skipped there for some reason. I, um, it would actually allow you to create, you know, either my, my Florida sales tax return and it'll tell me, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and approve it or my New York sales tax return and go ahead and approve it. And it gives you a quick summary of, of all the numbers and all that information comes um, straight from QuickBooks. So there's no uh, need to have that. So um, so there is, I'm just getting an answer here from the Avalara person that, that you do provide a Nexus studies. But uh, um, Diana, can you double check? Is that part of the service, the Nexus study or, or that's an additional fee? And I'll, I'll have her answer that to make sure because I'm not 100% sure. I've never done a Nexus study for my own clients uh, through Avalara, so I'm not sure if it's a paid fee or something that they included. Oh, there is an additional fee. Yeah, that makes sense because there, there's there's a lot of work um, that comes behind that. And you can also uh, manage tax notices. So if there's any tax notices about uh, taxes that are due and things like that. So um, that's, that's the great thing about Avalara. It's both a sales tax calculation Right, based on the product code, based on the tax code, based on the state, and it's also a sales tax filing service. Okay, they do other things as well, but I would say that's probably the best way to uh, to describe what Avalara does. Okay, let me go to the last couple of slides here. Okay, and hopefully we're seeing the right slides here. So now I should say um, Hector's tips to organizing the books and other tax-related activities. So I'm going to give you just a few uh, a few tips. Okay, number one, um, there's a video in YouTube um, that it's called the uh, QuickBooks Online Trial Balance. Search it, QuickBooks Online Trial Balance. If not, email me. Hector at GarciaCPA.com and I'll send it to you. I talk about a lot of, um, you know, how to make final uh, adjustments and journal entries into the books in order to get it done for tax preparation. Nothing to do with the three apps that are below here. That would be tax uh, tip number one. Tip number two is consolidate accounts as much as possible. So merge accounts as much as possible. Uh, make sub accounts. Make sure you don't have so many accounts that makes the chart of accounts so difficult to read um, whenever you're going to give this to a tax preparer to do uh, tax related activities. And the other important piece is be proactive with uh, like tax season should not be the only time where we're discussing and talking about 
tax. Okay, we should be proactive using tools like Tax Planner Pro, using tools like Avalara to manage taxes all, all year long. Um, in the case of uh, Tax 1099, you know, 10, 1099s are only done once a year, but you be proactive at collecting W9s because nowadays sometimes you try to collect 1099s from I mean, double your nines from some of these contractors and then they get lost because they don't want you to report their stuff to the IRS. So that's another important tip. I'm going to go ahead and, and launch uh, the CPE keyword for those of you that want um, that need your CPEs. And so that's the CPE keyword. Go ahead and answer that. And, um, and we'll just have one more slide that we'll go through and we'll go ahead and finish up after we get all the votes. So um, go ahead and vote. Uh, this Add your CPE answer in there so we can generate your CPE certificate. Are there any other questions, Wendy, while we have the CPE question up? No, I think they've all been taken care of. Okay, somebody's asking, would this work with eBay, PayPal, and Amazon sales? That's a good question. Uh, maybe I can ask that with, um, I can ask that to, uh, to Diana here from um, from Avalara. So can Avalara talk to eBay, Amazon, and um, and PayPal? And we'll wait for her to answer that question. Again, I'm not sure. I haven't integrated Avalara to any of those, so I'm not 100% sure. I do know that Amazon will 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 let you know and and collect the sales tax for you and all that stuff. What I don't know if Avalara will take the information from there. I assume that if you import those invoices into QuickBooks and uh, and the right uh, information is in there. Um, she says yes and no, we'll collect the data from them. So maybe uh, for that question, I would just contact Avalara directly so they can maybe explain to you what will be, what is it exactly or how is it exactly that Avalara will, will work with them. So, so Avalara will take the sales information from them, but Avalara won't calculate the sales tax uh, for them. So, so eBay and Amazon, they make their own sales tax calculations. And then Avalara just assumes it's correct at that point, And it can collect the data to remit the form and pay the taxes, but it won't calculate it for them. Hopefully that, that answers your question that way. All right. So I close the polling now. And then just the last slide here, I wanted to show, just make sure, just wanted to make sure that you, you see that is my slide showing? Is it the consultants opportunity slide showing when these? Oh, it's not showing, Hector. Okay. Uh, this thing just, for some reason, just gets uh, unshared. How about now? Looks good now. It should say, it, it should actually say consultants opportunity. Yes, that's what we see. Okay, perfect. So what is the consultants opportunity? If you're an account, accounting professional, with multiple clients or a QuickBooks consultant, consider the following. Um, Tax Planner Pro, whether you do taxes or not, help your client keep track of the potential tax liability they can have at the end of the year, all year long and practically real time, right? It's one week, right? But that's, that's real time compared to people that just wait one year. Um, you can even project an uh, income and expenses based on current numbers or based on maybe information that you know. Um, consider Tax 1099 to uh, prepare 1099 miscellaneous, 1099 uh, dividend interest, and um, import bulk information through Excel or request the W9s digitally instead of having a bunch of paper W9s and potentially having data entry error. And, uh, and consider using Avalara both on the service side to do the Nexus study, because if you sell in multiple states and you think you may have Nexus in multiple states or your client may have Nexus in multiple states based on the different bullet points we, we spoke about, you know, work with Avalara, uh, um, do a, a Nexus study, make sure that you know and understand which states you may or may not have to collect sales tax in, and then use Avalara with QuickBooks Online to calculate every single sales, sales tax so that you don't have to manually figure out, depending on the state and the city, how much sales tax to charge. So those are the three um, apps that we have and the consulting opportunities. Um, go to the apps.com website, which looks like this, to browse uh, the, for those these three apps or any other apps. Um, 
you can add them through the apps button on the left side of QuickBooks Online. I also consider the resource center in the apps.com website that has links to articles that myself and other people have written about multiple apps, has linked to videos and recorded webinars like this. So and in summary, you should now understand uh, you know, about what the apps.com website is all about, uh, the functions of these three apps, and the type of clients or the potential benefits your clients can get from these apps. Um, don't, don't forget, the CPE certificates will be emailed to you within three weeks. Keep it for your records. And if there's no more questions and comments, um, I, we can wrap this up. Are there any? I don't think there's any more questions and comments. All right, so I think we're pretty much done. Uh, thank you very much for participating. And we don't see any more questions. So have a wonderful day.